In this video, I will review The Empress, the new Netflix series about Elizabeth of Bavaria, aka Empress Sisi, and I will compare it to the rival production Sisi from 2021, which was made by the German RTL channel. I will also talk about how Sisi has been portrayed over the years, why it seems difficult to depict her story, and which portrayers I appreciate the most. Sissy's figure is an exciting subject for shows and movies because there are so many myths and mysteries around her, false priorities associated with her and ongoing disputes between historians about what she was really like. In some places there is this cult around her based on facts and misconceptions. Her image has been greatly formed by the Romy Schneider movies and her portrayal of Sissy. Since then, it has become quite a difficult job for any actress to depict Sissy on screen because Romy has become the Sissy icon. The Romy movies made in the 50s have become classics, Romy became the embodiment of Sissy for many, and any actress who portrays the Empress will inevitably be compared to Romy, while every Sissy production will always be compared to those movies, however unfairly. And and there will always be people who say, no, thank you, i rather stick to the Romy movies. Which in itself is not the correct attitude, in my opinion, since those movies are neither perfect nor anything close to reality. They rather belong to the historical fantasy genre, and there is nothing wrong with that. But for that reason, they should not be seen as the only way ever to depict Sissy. I see no fault in new productions trying to show Sissy from another perspective, maybe from a more realistic, darker one, or just simply looking at her life differently. Since the immense success of the Romy movies, there have been many productions about Sissy which wanted to capitalize on the success of the Romy movies or just wanted to explore Sissy's character differently. Nowadays there seems to be a new wave of sissy mania. A TV series came last year, another this year, a movie this year and another will come next year. When two or more productions about the same topic air so soon after one another, comparisons are inevitable. Now I will include only the two TV shows. First of all, I have to say that in both cases, my opinion is not the same as the general consensus or the popular opinion about each show. About Sissy, I already gave a short review in this video last year and I also expressed my thoughts in several comments below this video. In general, Sissy received mixed reviews, both from the audience and from the critics. Complaints included lack of any type of historical accuracy, tarnishing the historical figures, weak plot and weak characters. But several positive reviews called it a very good modern costume drama, the next Bridgerton, praised the series for its new dark look on Sissy's story and the series even appeared in several award ceremonies this year. All in all, the series was successful enough to be renewed for a second season, which is expected to air at the end of this year. The Empress, however, didn't even receive mixed reviews, it received generally positive ones, both from critics and viewers. The few negative reviews contain complaints about historical inaccuracy, especially the changes to Maximilian's character or the modern elements in the show. But mostly it received quite high ratings, it has already become quite popular, many compare it to the crown or call it the Austrian the crown, which I don't quite understand, but I will get into it. Now I must also mention that what I observed in the case of both series was that those who watched it not knowing much about Sissy or the history of this era tend to like both shows much better. Those who are very much into Sissy's real story or just know a lot about the history of Europe around this time tend to have reservations about both series, or, or at least that's what I have observed. It has made me think that perhaps I should have gone into watching these series without any expectations, pretending 
to not know the real history behind these characters. But I couldn't help but notice the historical inaccuracies. And by watching the show, I simply couldn't unknow the things I know about the historical figures. And that probably influenced my opinion about whether I like the show or not. So, let's get into the reviews. First of all, I think the storyline worked better in The Empress. While sometimes I found it quite boring, repetitive and predictable, I think the events unfolded in a sensible, consequent and linear way. The writing of the dialogues was okay, sometimes even great. I don't think the story was either great or perfect. There were a few nonsensical things and plot holes in it, but it was not terrible. Sissy, on the other hand, honestly, it is a mystery to me how it got such recognition, because I think the writing, the pacing, the characters, they are all over the place. Just when something interesting started to unfold, suddenly there was a time jump, and parts of the storyline were completely abandoned. It was full of plot holes and nonsensical things. I really can't say anything positive. Actually, I think the story of Sissy even had more potential than that of the Empress, because the time frame Sissy used was originally a better decision. Both series had six episodes, so roughly the same screen time, and by Sissy covered about the first 10 years of their relationship, the Empress covered only one year or so from their first meeting to the first few months of their marriage. So Sissy had the chance to include many events in the story, an opportunity it didn't use to its advantage because it dealt with the story so badly with misplaced time jumps, while the Empress had a very little story to begin with. So it was inevitable that things went slowly, there was one single political challenge that France was trying to solve for like five episodes. Honestly, it was a very weird decision that the writers decided to include only a few months in the story of the whole season. One thing that I liked more in the CC series was the main actor choices appearance-wise. I think in The Empress, Franz is not a bad choice, but the actor in CC looks the part much more. The actress in CC had the beauty and the looks that um, makes her not a bad choice for Elizabeth, but the actress in the Netflix series, I think that appearance-wise, there is not much about her that would make her suited for the role. But of course, appearance is not everything for actors. What I have to mention in both cases is that the casting and the writing too, fails to address the age gap between the characters. Sissy was only 15, 15, when the 23-year-old Franz Josef fell in love with her and he chose her instead of her 19-year-old sister Helene. So I think that's something a TV show about them could address, especially that Sissy's upcoming difficulties and struggles in the Viennese court were mainly the result of her tender age. But of course, when the actresses are in their mid-twenties and of similar age as the actors playing France, this is something that remains kind of hidden. I think the acting was much better in The Empress than in CC from the whole cast, basically. Though I must say that I can't exactly tell whose fault that was in CC. Maybe it's the writing. Because, for example, I have seen Yannick Schumann in other German productions. And I know he's a great actor. But in CC, I found his acting lacking as well. When it comes to Sissy's character, I think the Empress did it better. It was far from perfect, but it was still better than in Sissy. In Sissy, I think she had barely any personality. She was kind of dull. In the Empress, she had a bit of that immature, rebellious nature Elizabeth was so famous for. Regarding Franz Josef's character, I think there is no doubt who did it better. In Sissy, he was the 
worst male character I have ever seen. Not only was he nothing like the real emperor, but he was also just horrible in every way, from the beginning to the end, without any character development. In The Empress, his portrayal is decent, the workaholic, dutiful emperor, whose personality seems a bit boring next to Sissy's, and although he loves her, he is often incapable of expressing it. When it comes to the portrayal of their relationship, I think The Empress wins in that category too, and I'm not even talking about historical accuracy here. The relationship in Sissy is, quite honestly, one of the worst relationships I have seen on screen. Honestly. It's, it's, it's not enough that the writers thought it was okay in 2021 to romanticize such a violent man. There was not even any chemistry between Franz and Sissy. I watched it and simply couldn't understand why they love each other, other than being supposedly attracted to each other's good looks, which is very childish and even Disney tears go beyond that nowadays. In The Empress, the portrayal of the relationship was okay, not far from the real beginning of the relationship, probably. But yeah, it was just okay. And then CC, it was horrible. Another thing which I liked better in The Empress was the way Sissy's sister, Helene, and their relationship were portrayed. Now, this sisterhood is a core of Sissy's stories. There are two sisters loving each other, but ending up as rivals because of a man tale as old as time, a lot of potential for interesting story writing and character dynamics. But in Sissy, they completely missed the mark and the whole thing was just really awful. While in The Empress, what they did with this was okay. Actually, the true story of Elizabeth and Helene would make very good material for drama, the way they kind of ended up living the life meant for the other and one had a life that started as a fairy tale and ended in misery while the other first had to experience rejection and depression but then found her prince and the love of her life. But I don't expect these dramas to always follow history accurately and I think the Empress even missed the good opportunity that presented itself in the story when Sissy wanted Nanny to stay in Vienna with her after her wedding. While of course it would have been historically inaccurate if Nene stayed in Vienna, I think it would have been wonderful for the whole series if she had a bigger role. It would have been full of opportunities. She and Sissy could have had many great interactions, she could have served as a counterpoint to the childish Sissy, she could have been someone Sissy shares her thoughts with on screen, they could have explored the sisterhood so amazingly. Not to mention that they could have added a very good love story to the series with Helene meeting her prince in the court of Vienna. That would have been so great. So what I'm saying is that I am not necessarily against historical inaccuracies if they work in the story, if they serve the plot and the characters, and if they don't cross a certain line. In many cases, the chronology of the historical events has to be altered when adapted to the screen, because you somehow have to compress several years in history into a few hours long story on screen. Characters who in history mostly interacted through letters because of their geographical distance have to meet and talk on screen much more because it is very difficult to portray those letter communications on screen. Also, characters have to say things out loud on screen that they probably just thought but never said in real life because that is the only way the audience can know about these things. These inaccuracies are justified and I think the 2009 CC miniseries handles this very well. It keeps the most important historical events but alters the chronology in some cases for dramatic purposes. But all in all, it does justice to CC and the other characters. While in the case of the two shows here, they are just full of inaccuracies that make absolutely no sense 
This is the worst, I think, with all that brothel prostitute storyline and the other nonsensical inaccuracies. They alter the chronology, but there is no benefit in that in the drama. On the contrary, it makes the storyline a complete mess. While the Empress is just a bit better, because it kind of keeps the timeline of the historical events, but they fill up the story with many unnecessary additions and modernizations, which just throw you out of the story. Not to mention that there is a certain inaccuracy, which, for me, crosses every line. When I said historical inaccuracies shouldn't cross a certain line, this is exactly what I meant.